Okay. All right, we're recording. Welcome to the Taft Ellis December 2020 meeting. Hang on, I'm still adding people to through the waiting room here. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm gonna take roll call. Anita Bernacki. Here. Uh, Mary Kim Cobb. Do not see her. LSC members, if you see uh, someone I'm not seeing, then let me know, but I won't see her. Uh, Goran Division. Present here. Chrissy Estrada. Happy Fern here. Monica Moore. I see you, Monica. Chad Nishibiashi. Marianne's not here yet, so she's gonna be a little bit late. Chris Raguso. Here. Laura Keeling's not here. Maria McDorman. Here. Okay. And Amelia Mano. Here. Okay. And then also we'd like to welcome uh, new LSC members. Their terms will start January. 21st, we have Julieta Pasco. Julieta, you are unmuted. You can say hello. Good afternoon. Good evening to all of you. I initiated my conversation with Kathy in saying I'm new, I'm listening, I'm learning, and I'm watching, and I'm looking forward to assist in every way I can. I am impressed by the caliber of all of, all of you guys. Uh, doing this kind of work uh, is not easy. And in particular, now the principal has a huge burden on his shoulder with COVID. So we will support you, at least praying for you so that you won't get sick and that you will go on with the mission because the work that we all do as parents and community people if this is a missionary work, this is not uh, something that we can take lightly. So I'm here representing the school community and, and just for some of you that do not know me, um, I'm a former retired bilingual Chicago public school psychologist and I retired from Taft High School. And um, at that particular time, we did not have the Taft that the principal uh, has demonstrated to us. I mean, this is almost like that small college environment, which I think is great. And um, I hope that I can be of any help. Um, my specialty is uh, bilingual special education. That's where my heart is. And the other skills that I have is legislation uh, and also uh, parent training, and um, I just passed a piece of legislation on um, bilingual interpreters for limited English proficiency parents who have children with disabilities to participate at the IEPs. And um, I'm looking forward to contributing whatever uh, you want me to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and mute you again. Uh, then we'd also like to welcome new teacher rep, uh, Bridget Doherty Trebbing, which I think I did unmute you already. No, I did not. There you go. Okay, say hello. Hey, hello, everybody. Thank you. Okay, and then uh, there's two uh, teachers that are vying for one more position. Uh, Scott Plensner, which I did see somewhere. Um, where did you go? There you are. Unmute. You can say hello, Mr. Plensner. Hello. How are you doing? I haven't been elected yet, but I'm here for the show. Right. <laughs> and then uh, I'm going to mute you again. And then uh, is Mr. Uh, Render on? I did not see him. No, he won't be on tonight. He's okay. All right. Going to let some more people in the waiting room. Sorry, guys. It's going to take a little time here. Okay. And then... Uh, 
Don't forget Amelia got and then I was getting next, oh, okay. next to our new uh, student rep, fully vested now for the entire year, Amelia Mano. Hi, I mean, I was already here, but glad <laughs> to be here for another how long. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. All right, and I am gonna re-mute, well, let's say did a roll call. We have to still do, um, all right. Announcements, let's see, I did that, I did that. Okay, and then we'd also like to thank some people that will be leaving the committee after today. Uh, Goran Davidovic has served um, on our committee for quite a long time and uh, is a Taft alumni. And uh, we wanna thank you, sir, for all of your passion and uh, um, ideas and uh, support of the, the students, putting the students first. And I uh, just wanted to wish you good luck and we hope we see you again. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. I, uh, Go ahead. I'll make a few words towards the end of the uh, meeting, so I don't okay. waste people's time. Thank you. All right, and then also uh, saying goodbye to Chad Nish Nishibayashi as the teacher rep. So Chad, thank you so much for all the great uh, information you shared with us on behalf of the PPLC and the uh, sporting programs we have. It's it's been my pleasure, without question. And I don't believe that we have Marianne yet, but Marianne. Uh, Phyllis Senior will also be leaving the committee. This uh, this will be her last meeting. So thank you, Marianne, for all of your dedication. And uh, it's been a pleasure working with all of you. Okay. Uh, also wanna uh, recognize the Student Voice Committee. Um, we do have a report from them and that will be uh, summarized and delivered by Ms. Mano toward the uh, end of the meeting. Um, I'm gonna ask everyone to please turn on your cameras. It's gonna help me understand who's here and if I, uh, anybody I need to keep my eye on because <laughs> we've had some difficulty in the last meeting. So I uh, appreciate your cooperation there. Um, and then we will go on to approving today's agenda as written. Can I get a motion to approve today's agenda and all the LSC members should still be unmuted. If you're not, I'm gonna unmute you again. I'll make a motion to approve today's minutes or last week's minutes. Sorry, last meeting's minutes. You asked for oh, the, it, it, this is for the agenda for today. Oh, agenda. I'll approve today's agenda. All right. I'll second Estrada. Okay. So Chris, this is agenda. It's Chris and Estrada. Okay. I got to do a roll call for voting. So make sure everybody's unmuted here. Is Maria unmuted? Okay. Okay, good. All right. Um, this is just to approve the agenda. Anita Bernacki? Yes. Uh, I don't see Mary Kay. No. Gordon Davidovic? Thank you. Chrissy yes. Estrada? Yes. Yes. Kathy Fern? Yes. Monica Moore? Okay, we can't hear you, Monica, but I see you saying yes. Chad Nishibayashi? Yes, I'm here. Okay, let me know when Mary Ann uh, shows up. Uh, Chris Raguso? Yes. Uh, Maria McDormand? Yes. And Amelia Mano? Yes. All right. Okay, agenda is approved. Next, we have uh, the minutes from November 10th. You should have all received those, and they're also in the um, Google Drive for the LSC. So, can I get a motion to approve the minutes from last meeting? I'll make a, and, and I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Sorry, Chrissy. Okay, that's Anita making the motion. And then did I hear Chrissy seconding? Sure. Okay. Anita, your sound is delayed again, so. Minutes. It was slow. Okay, I'm gonna switch computers I'll be okay. back. All right. Okay. Wait, wait until uh we vote. Hold on. <laughs> you can just wave a yes, okay? Um, all right. So, Anita, approving the minutes. <laughs> Thank she gave you. a thumbs up. <laughs> Sorry, this is painful. Uh, Gord Davidovic. <laughs> yes, to approve the minutes. Chrissy Estrada. Yes. Kathy Fern. Yes. Monica Moore. 
Okay. Chad Nishbiashi? Yes. Chris Raguso? Yes. Maria McDormand? Is Maria back on mute again? Yes. Okay. She's saying yes. And Amelia Mano. All right. You wouldn't let me yes. on mute. All right. Great. Minutes are approved. All right. State of the school. Uh, Mr. Grishay, I'm going to mute everybody. Perfect. Hey, Kath, just so you know, you, you never asked my approval on any of those, but I, I say yes to all of them. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I had the wrong list printed, so thank you. That's okay. Welcome. All right. All right. Oh, I'm juggling. Okay. Okay. Um, I, what I'd like to do, if it's okay with the, with the LOC, is, is I'm not going to have a principal report this week. I'm going to kind of combine it in the um, LSC or in the uh, state of the school. Okay. So first thing I'd like to go over is our budget transfers right away. And just let's just knock those out. Okay. All right. So I'm going to share my screen right now. Uh, do I have to allow it? There we go. Good. Can you see it, Kath? Yes. Okay. So we have two uh, approvals for expenditures over 10,000 and then consequently two approvals for budget uh, transfers too. The first one is for BSN Varsity Sports. Those are, are basically to recondition our uh, football stuff this year. It's, a, it's, an, it's an ongoing cost every year in the, in the winter time. We always have to pay this um, just to keep our kids safe. And, and they, they turn all the helmets in. They make sure everything's screwed in okay. And it's, it's the cost of doing business. So that's a normal expense. The next one is also Norman, uh, normal. It's Justin's. That's the half the price it's going to cost us for our 2021 yearbooks. Okay, it's going to cost us about $44,000. They asked for half money down before they start everything. And then at the end of the year, they'll pay for it. The other will ask you for the other half. But by then, we'll probably have anywhere from between forty two dollars and forty five dollars or $6,000. We always come in either 1000 under or 1000 over, depending on, on uh, the, the year and the demand. So those are the only two budget uh, transfers and uh, uh uh, approval. So any questions on those before I move on? If you want to take a, a vote on that cap, that would be the only thing that we need to vote on. Okay. All right. Any questions? Uh, just, just wave like this if you have a question from the LSC. All right. I'm going to unmute everybody for voting. There's Anita. Okay. Good. Amelia. 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 Chris. Okay. Monica. All right. Um, so we're. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the two budget transfers? I'll make a motion to approve the budget transfers as presented. Okay. I'll second. <laughs> Who was that? Chris. Okay. And Kathy, sorry, can you hear me better now? Much better, yes. thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, so this is a, a voting to approve the budget transfers. Oh, that'll be Chad, hold on. There we go. There you are. All right, Chad, you should be unmuted. Okay, thank you. Um, Anita Bernacki? Yes. Uh, Goran Davidovic? Yes. Chrissy Strada? Yes. Kathy Fern? Yes. Monica Moore? Yes. Chad Nishibayashi? Yes. Uh, Chris Raguso? Yes. Laura, uh, Maria McDormand? Yes. Amelia Mano? Yes. Mark Schaber? Yes. Great. Thank you. Okay. Budget, uh, budgets are approved. Budget transfers are approved. Okay. Now to the state of the school. Okay. Uh, and I want to apologize a little bit to uh, uh, some of our our budget committee because they they saw some of the slides in there, so I'm going to review some of them. I also uh, want to let everybody know that normally the state of the school for the, for my first six years here um, has always been in May of that year because we normally know what our numbers are um, at that time. Our SQRP numbers are becoming are becoming in light. And actually, this year was the year that I wanted to kind of drop the mic and say, yes, we are a level one plus school. Uh, because I, I felt that once the one number that was holding us back uh, the last couple of years was our freshman on track. And I knew that if we had the freshman academy, 
uh, and we could get all those kids working together and we put, we surround them by outstanding teachers and counselors and get them all in one group that we would hit that freshman on track, which we did. We, my first five years, we couldn't break through 85 to 87%. And I think last year we ended at 96%. It probably would have been a little bit lower uh, had COVID not hit, but I was, we were firmly in the 94%. So that would have gained us the five points. So I really feel like um, we would have got the one plus. But you know what? It's it's going to be a sweep when we finally do get it uh, in the next year or two. Um, so with that said, before I start here, I, I, I uh, do want to give a special shout out to all of the teachers um, out there. This is a day on Tuesday of once a month that I have to be on this computer from 2.30 to about 7.30 or eight o'clock. And that's what teachers do every day. And I get an appreciation for them. I'm normally on the computer six hours, seven hours a day, but normally in a 12 hour period. So it's not all crammed up like that. So I do get an appreciation for all the teachers out there. And I do wanna give a special shout out to, to the APs. I have the best team and everybody in the network 14 knows it. They know that I have the best team. Uh, you can say anything about, <laughs> about me that you want. I don't really care. But you, you can't say that I don't pick good people. And, and I have the best AP team in, in the state as far as I'm concerned. Hardest working, uh, like Pat said today, he left the, usually at 7.30, you know, and, and it's just amazing. So a lot of the stuff that I go over today is, is, is their hard work. Um, and I'll just take credit for the fact that, that I've got them on board. So I'm gonna start the presentation right now. Um, and I'll, hopefully I can get through this. Um, it's 73 slides. You're like, oh my God, but it's going to go real quick. I promise. Once we get to the pictures and stuff, the first couple of slides are all from CPS, which is kind of standard. So bear with me. Uh, this, this presentation right here is in the local school council's folder on the drive. So you can go through this anytime you want to. So I'll just kind of, kind of quickly go through CPS's uh, uh, slides. They don't mandate it, but I think it is important because they are they are the umbrella on which we work under. So I, I, I will give them this though. I love their vision uh, because it's three, it's three words and they, and they get it that, you know, a, a vision or a mission that, that isn't remembered or nobody knows about it is useless. So I think we can all, all agree that um, success starts here uh, is pretty easy. Uh, the, the mission, uh, we, can, we can work on that later. We got some time to work on that one, but that's their mission too. High quality public education for every child. So let me move on uh, here. Uh, that's the apple they always show us and it's basically three areas that uh, Dr. Jackson has concentrated on. And, I, and, and I'll just go on record as saying, I think she's been an outstanding leader for us, especially been from the Chicago Public Schools. Uh, she walks the walk and talks the talk. So academic progress, which I think as a district, and I know as a school we're doing, but I, I feel like we're you know, also uh, doing it as a school. Don't forget, you know, one out of, more than one out of every hundred kids in CPS is a TAF student. So I, every time we move the dial, CPS moves the dial. So one out of every hundred kids is a TAF student. Uh, financial stability, uh, well, that, they could probably do better on that, I would imagine. But integrity, I think, is wonderful too. I think I, I, nobody can question uh, Dr. Jackson uh, doing wonderful. These are our core values, all, all, all make sense. Uh, student centered, whole child equity, which I'll get onto next real quick. So again, uh, our, our push this year, and I, and I hope every year going forward, is the difference between equality and equity. And I think this slide right here really reps, represents it, that it's not the same bicycle for every student or child or even teacher. It is equality and what, and what best fits uh, for each person. Um, and so there, there's their definition on it and stuff. Um, so again, it's, it's, in, it's in the slide deck that you can uh, review later. So in, in, as far as uh, time goes, I'm gonna try to skim through this. Uh, these are their five-year visions. And so if you, I want everybody to remember right now, this goes to 2024, okay? So uh, I put, don't worry about the first couple things like this 50% here. I'm gonna see if you can see my mouse. Um, the 50%, don't worry about this. Don't worry about early childhood. Don't worry about elementary school. Even though we do have an academic center, they're treated as high school kids. They're not treated as elementary school. But, but for their five-year vision, so by 2024, they want, every, the freshman on track to be 90%. Last year, we were at 96.85%. So we've got that one. We've already, we're actually four years ahead of the curve. Uh, students who graduate high school within five years, they want 90%. We're at 88.5% right now. So I know we're going to blow that out of the water as we have more and more of these great classes that, that come to TAF. Like I was talking to somebody the other day, 
I said, if, you know, we, we've had such a, a curve over the years and it was like before, I don't know when, but it was like, if, if you came to Taft, it was, it was kind of sometimes looked down on like, oh, you couldn't get into select enrollment schools. You couldn't, you couldn't, um, you know, afford the, the, the private schools. And then it started to be where, where some kids were, were like getting in and turning down the select enrollment schools. And that was the second phase that we kind of went to. And now we're at a phase where a lot of kids, great kids are not even considering the, the select enrollment schools. And that's how I know that we've really turned the corner here. A lot of hard work from everybody. I'm not taking credit for that. That's everybody over the last 10 years. And so kids are saying, I'm going to Taft and that's it. And, and, and they're great kids. And so as we start to, to matriculate those kids through our system, that number is going to rise. Uh, students who meet college readiness uh, benchmarks, 50% they want, we're already at 57%. I think we'll be at 65% or 70% by 2024 if, if, if uh, Jenny, our curriculum director, and, and my team, uh, you know, has anything to say about that. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna knock that number out of the park. And then finally, uh, graduates who enroll in college, uh, 78% uh, uh, they want. Right now, we're at 76.8%. And again, that number is going to rise uh, definitely. I have, no, I, have, I have no doubts about that. Again, those are 2024 numbers. We're already there, basically. Uh, next one, our mission. Again, I, I like this because I, I love it when I hear people saying our mission. You know, our, our mission statement, educate global citizens, three words. Everybody knows it, okay? Um, and and what's, what's amazing is um, I was looking at old yearbooks the other day from like 1944 and our, our, uh, our, our first president, our first principal, uh, Mr. Hoffer was talking about how he wants to educate global citizens. And I'm like, see, Leo had it even back then he had it. So, and then our vision statement four words, create a better world. It doesn't get much better than that. I've always said it. I would like the word love in there somewhere, uh, but uh, we can work on that in the next couple of years. Um, uh, so these are some of our mottos, and I put these in here for some of our, our, our newer members um, that have just joined, um, but, um, but also we added a couple, so I just want to make sure everybody, uh, teaching academics for tomorrow, that I can't take credit for that, that was here when I got here, and I just think it's great, TAF Teach, Teaching, teaching Academics for Tomorrow, uh, that's a wonderful motto, school starts at 7.30, I think that's a good one. Uh, no one eats alone in the cafeteria, I, I believe that uh, for the most part we take care of business like that. One school, two campuses. Um, that's been our motto for a year and a half now. Uh, last year, towards the end, I kind of added this one, be you. Whoever you are, we want you to be you, your individuality, we stress it. And then uh, the new one I added this year is no dreams too high, where eagles fly. So we're going to kind of use those taglines a little bit. You guys all know I'm a marketing guy and I like taglines and I like, uh, I like branding like that. So let's move on. New initiatives this year, uh, remote learning. Uh, whether or not we, we, we like it or don't like it, we've been thrust into it. Um, and so um, we're doing the best we can. And, and you know what? Um, I, I got to hand it to my teachers out there and my counselors and, and, and my staff. They're, they're, they, got, they got handed a, a tough sandwich right now and they're eating the best they can on it. Uh, it's tough, um, and, but they're doing a good job. But I, I, I like to see that we see the end of the tunnel right now. And, and um, our attendance rate is real good right now. And all of our other numbers are really good right now. So uh, we're kind of an anomaly in, in, I believe, CPS as far as our kids. Yeah, some kids are, are hurting and, and it's going to take its toll. And I think the ripple effect will happen when the kids start coming back and, and coming back to school. But right now, I think everybody's doing the best we can. Um, a new grading policy, which I think is wonderful. Uh, the lowest grade is 50% right now. That's the lowest F you can get. Uh, which mathematically is the right thing to do. Um, I, will, I will debate anybody on that at any time. It's just the right thing to do. It doesn't bury our kids. Uh, and I think a lot of our kids can see that right now where they might have like a 57%, 56%. And so they can see a way out of it where some years they might've had a 10 or 15% because they didn't do a lot at the beginning of the year. And, it, and there's no use to even showing up the class. So it, it's really working out well. And I think a lot of teachers are, are understanding that. There still is a little pushback, but you know, like with anything, I, I could, um, you're never gonna have 100% consensus on anything. Uh, our common syllabus, I think was way overdue. Uh, that is, it, it's not telling everybody what to do, but we needed some commonality as far as our grading system, which we do. And also like late work, because if somebody, if I had something from a parent that would say, you know what, how come, uh, Mr. Johnson, I, he, he, I, he lets me take it 
hand in work for five weeks and, and a month and a half. And Mr. Smith doesn't let me do it uh, only two days. And so we needed to shore that up. So we, we got together with the teachers and we said, what is an acceptable policy for late work? I mean, let's, we're not, I'm not going to dictate anything, but the, the teachers came up with and, and our leadership committees came up with until the end of the unit. So that's in every syllabus. Um, and so we have a commonality right there, just like everybody has a, has a common keyboard. You would hate to have different keyboards for every computer. So we needed that common syllabus. A DocuSign, um, I gotta give that out again to all the APs, especially Mr. Glowitz, he worked on that. Again, we're doing stuff right now that other schools are contacting us and saying, how are you doing it? I wanna do that. And so we, were, we piloted this program. Uh, CPS had it, but no one really took advantage of it. Mr. Glowitz uh, took that under his wings and, and really did it. And right now everybody's contacting us on how to do it. Our uh, sophomore houses, again, that's all of our APs um, uh, that really put a lot of initiative into that, but we carry that on to the freshman houses and now the sophomore houses. To put it out there, we will not have junior houses or senior houses. It's just logistically impossible. So um, uh, virtual parent teacher conferences, I'll, I'll put it out there. Again, I, I put it to all the APs because they were all working on that. But again, a lot of kudos goes out to uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Kuzma and, and Mr. Glowitz uh, for doing that. But I know a lot of APs were involved in that. Um, online programming for more honors and advanced courses. Again, I call them educational vegetables. Um, Mr. Kuzma and, and our APs were uh, had a system to where we can see what your your grade point average average is, where you should be, and are you are you not eating your educational vegetables or do you have too many vegetables on your plate? And, and this kind of a system uh, kind of worked really well to where it targeted it for our counselors to be able to have these conversations that were more targeted, more uh, like a rifle target than, than like a shotgun approach where you didn't know where they were coming from. It really targeted for it. Um, student Congress, which we're, we're piloting this year, which I'm really look, looking forward to. I know the student voice committee will be one of the houses uh, in that Congress, but we're also gonna be able to have uh, Miss Amelia is going to have uh, voices from our sports teams are going to have a voice. Our clubs are going to have the voice. Our English language learners are going to have a voice. IB is going to have a voice. So I'd rather have too many student voices than, than uh, just one. Um, I, I love our, our, our last um, uh, students that we had as our representative, but I think Miss uh, Amelia is really going to take it to the next level because usually what they would do is ask a lot of their friends and they would come to them and say, say this, and it was kind of a limited voice, but I think this way it really is. We're gonna get a lot a lot of voice. I know the Student Voice Committee uh, puts out surveys that are regularly getting 800 and 900 replies, which is awesome because we, we need to hear as many voices as we can. So we're looking forward to that. EOS, which is a wonderful uh, opportunity that we're doing right now. And they're showing us how we as a school can open up our doors to our uh, minorities as far as getting into IB and, um, some of the AP classes and upper levels that um, we need to eliminate a lot of the gatekeepers and a lot of a lot of things that are keeping kids back. Uh, we need to look at and, and to uh, reconfigure right now because we need more of our our kids into all the programs like that. Uh, ATL days. I know uh, Ms. Greenblatt. I'm gonna give her a plug right now, but I know it's a little bit of everybody. We have that day tomorrow, kind of a refresh, reboot, uh, catch up day tomorrow. Uh, the kids are craving that. The teachers need that too. So we got one of those planned uh, tomorrow. I'm going to go into a little bit of that later. And then also monthly postcards. I put that on. I know it should be two words. I messed up there. But we're going to, um, this was actually Mr. Kuzma came up with this idea and passing to me. So we should have postcards. And then he kind of walked away and I kind of milled that over a little bit. And I said, that's a good idea. So I've been working with this company and we're going to come up with uh, um, every month, we're going to have a different um, TAP postcard. Uh, and so at the end of this presentation, I have a December's postcard that everybody's going to get mailed. But then through the next couple of years, every month, every staff member is going to get a postcard. And it's going to be a lot of different areas. It's going to be a lot of different clubs, a lot of different eras. I'm going to have some eras from the, the 40s and the 50s and some, some uniforms and stuff. And I just saw a, a nice picture I'll probably put in there from the uh, four PE teachers from the 1950s and, and they have tapped on their shirt. So it's going to be, it's going to be a really good thing. And so I think it's going to be a collector's thing. So everybody who, who buys them, don't pitch them. Uh, I think that they're going to be traded uh, very heavily when we get to 2039 in our hundredth anniversary party. I think it's a set of those may be going for a couple hundred dollars. So just a little clue there for you. Uh, let's move on. Uh, so usually I would talk of this presentation a lot about the SQRP and, and the, uh, I think there's 20 different uh, metrics on there. Uh, but we didn't have it last year. So I'll just touch on a couple of points. Uh, we've been a level one school. The only time I was not a level one school was my first year here. 
And then the next year we've been at ever since. So uh, since 2015 to the present, we've been a level one school firmly embedded in that. And that says a lot, especially when you look at, um, you know, the fact that we do have um, a high population of diverse learners and English language learners. And, and sometimes um, just say they're just not the best test takers, and, but I don't care. There, there, there are kids and whoever comes in our door are our kids. But um, I think that's unbelievable that as a, as a true neighborhood school that we're firmly embedded in level one. And before, before I drop the mic on this whole gig, we're gonna be a level one plus. Uh, last uh, US News and World Report, second year in a row. I kind of like that one. I think the initiatives we're gonna do this year, we're gonna move up in those rankings too. Uh, but for the last two years, uh, we've been recognized. Again, a high, high, high praise, uh, especially since 2006 when we were labeled as a dropout high school uh, by uh, uh, Johns Hopkins University. We've come a long way and a lot of hard work. And, and what's fun is talking to some of the teachers that have been here through all those tough years and now that they're here now, uh, seeing some of their experiences. Uh, one of only two schools in Network 14 that raised and increased our freshman on track and sophomore on track. And I put that on there because it's really important because I think a lot of people will, will say like, well, your freshman on track went up because of COVID and, 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 you, and a lot of people weren't, well, you know what, that's not true because we are one of the only two schools that did go up. Other schools were going down and we were, we were all playing by the same rules. And so ours did go up. So I think that's a special kudo right there. Uh, and again, we have increased our freshman on track and four-year graduation rates, uh, so better supporting our incoming and upcoming students. Uh, here's some demographics, and this is more for everybody. I kind of took like a snapshot <coughs> of where Taft is right now. Uh, in, in, in accounting, they would call this a balance sheet rather than an income statement. So this is like a picture of where Taft is right now. So hold on, let me put some of my stuff in. Let me get going here so I can see. So our demographics, as you can see, we got six years there. We've got 87 kids in seventh grade. Eighth grade, we have 89. As our ninth graders this year, they uh, matriculated over from uh, the freshman academy. We have 1,093. So that's usually probably 1,000 of our freshmen uh, came over. We probably had 45 of our, our academic center kids. And then we had 45 kids that probably came from uh, some of the other schools too, uh, uh, from around the, the neighborhood. That, that, and then uh, that last year's freshman, uh, are now 1,099. So uh, and then we have uh, 819 for 11th graders. And then this year it's 779, I believe it's 777, but uh, that's close enough. But that's who will be walking the stage this year. Hopefully we can get all of them to walk stages, the stage this year. Demographics, um, uh, white is still our number one uh, demographic right now. It's 1773, uh, followed by Hispanic, Asian, um, Black, uh, multiracial and then Hawaiian and then we have not available in American Indian. So right now it really is uh, white is is like I believe like 48% and I believe Hispanic is like 42%. Um, but it's, it's been holding like that for a while. Um, demographics as far as our ELL first box is right here. So out of all of our kids, these are our kids that are not but we have 365 355 kids that are EL kids. So I, I hate to use the the, uh, the letters when people don't know that's English language learners. So these some are sometimes kids that are just new to America. I mean, they just they just got here and a lot of them don't speak our language. And like, like we said, a lot of people think that we're not diverse. Our population speaks, our kids speak 55 different languages at home. And a home language is what's spoken at home. 55 different languages. So no one should ever tell me that we're not diversified up here because we are. And a lot of these kids, 355, don't speak a lick of English and we take them and we do a good job with them. Some of them are, are and we try to, to, to work them through and some of them are getting better or better, but we have 355. Our uh, free and reduced lunch, it's a little bit um, under 50% uh, as far as yes. I believe that number is gonna go up this year though. I think uh, the, the COVID, um, economy has hit a lot of people. And so I think that's probably going to be reversed by next year. Uh, for anybody that knows anything about the budget, that's our CIWP budget. For every person that's free or reduced, we get $950 and I think $50 for every one of those students that's free and reduced. So I don't mind that you can't pay fees, but at least uh, put in for free and reduced lunch, which I think right now we're about 90% of those uh, those uh, forms are in right now. And I think Ryan's going to do, do a good job. We're going to get the 95%. And we're going to be dogging on it. We're just going to be making, if I have to make phone calls, we're going to get people to fill out those forms. And the last ones are our IEPs, our DL department. We have 523 kids with IEPs. Okay. I think we have the largest department, and not only in CPS, but I would say Illinois, maybe even the nation. Our DL department right now is bigger than most schools in CPS. 
uh, high schools. Uh, okay, this is where our kids come from, in case anybody's interested right now. So uh, who took over number one was Bridge. Uh, so this is the last year's freshman class. <coughs> Bridge followed by out of district, and then we got Smizer. Garvey is still holding strong, the Bulldogs. I hear we have a couple of Flores kids over there. They're gonna be coming over here and, and changing the curve and, and making our uh, numbers go through the roofs. Crossing, Devers up there. And so these are, this is what a, it's averaged out for every year. This is about what we get every year from everybody. It's kind of interesting. And I know that um, Ryan and I have been doing the, uh, the annual uh, fall tour and we've been to a lot of those LSCs and spoken to a lot of those schools. And so the interest for TAP is, is really high out there. Uh, this is staff breakdown in case anybody was interested in it. Uh, right now, our biggest department is diverse learners. And as you can go through a lot of our big departments, but the bottom number right there, 343.4. Okay, and what's a point four? We don't have a point four person walking around. Yeah, what we do, that's a person that only works two days a week. That's a social worker that uh, we have 2.4 social workers. So two full-time ones, and then one would work two days a week. So that's what the point four is. But as you can see, it's, it's pretty well spread around there. And so um, it, it's, a, it's a big staff right now. So if you put everybody together, you know, you put our uh, 3,960 kids together in this, we're looking at 4,300 people walking uh, uh, through the campuses at, at TAF. Um, I, I tried to, I called Larry Marsh, our, our rear admiral, an alumni from 59 and said, are we bigger than the aircraft carrier? And he said, no, not quite. An aircraft carrier usually has about 5,500. So uh, don't worry, we're not gonna get there, Lauren. We will not be as big as an aircraft carrier. So uh, this is our teacher retention, which I think is huge. Um, and, and, I've, and I've always said this since day one, my number one priority at the beginning of the year is to bring every teacher, teacher and staff member back. If you're doing a good job, you're trying, I will bring you back and we'll find a spot for you. So, and also teachers are choosing not to leave. If they do leave, uh, it's usually, um, sometimes they go out of, they, they leave the profession or, uh, you know, sometimes they go to a different school, but usually they're, they're, they're out of the profession or maybe they retire or something like that. But our retention rate is 94.3%. So in the district, um, it's 81%, okay? In the state, because I don't, I don't like to comp compete against uh, CPS, I like to compete against the state, we're 85%, for almost 10 percentage points more than a lot of the schools in the district. So I think that's huge. That tells us a lot about the fact that, you know what, we may not always agree with each other, but we respect each other and then we're like one big family and we stick around. So 94%, I think that's testament to a lot of things. Um, so this is what I wanted to talk about. There are approaches to learning day. Um, and a lot of people like, hey, you know, they're like, Mr. G, Lane Tech gets off once a week. Why can't we? Okay, well, we're not Lane Tech. We're not a lot of those schools. Okay, our numbers are really doing well right now. And I understand a lot of people are, um, are, are you know, are hurting and it's, it's a lot of time on screen. We get all that. But I wanted to put this in here because I wanted to tell everybody it's like little chunks. And what I told <clears throat> when I told one, I forget who I told, but when I drove to Alaska in 88, I, I, I mapped out my, 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 my time to get up there. And it was like every four hours, there was a gas station or a town every eight hours. And so I just put this here to kind of give everybody hope that as we get to the end of the year, these are like manageable little chunks that we can get through um, to make it through the end of the year. So we've got uh, after tomorrow, we got seven days to, to win a break. We can make that. Seven days we can do. When we come back, we got 10 days until we get a day off. Then we have 13 days till we get another day off of the semester ends. Okay, five days, 11 days. So the most we have is 17 days there. But after those 17 days, you're, you're pretty much at spring break or at the end of the year. So I think those are all manageable. We've got a couple of ATL days in there that are kind of breaking up the monotony of like, <clears throat> the doldrums of, of a school year that can hit it. So we've inserted those. This isn't in stone. We may change those around a little bit. We may go to where the five week marking period is to give teachers a breather on getting all the, that late work turned in that they can they can finally get around to grading or our kids can get uh, get busy and get some of that work done. So I'm just putting that there to, to say that we, we are hearing it. We are we are cognizant of the fact that, that, that people are hurting out there and are on the computer too much. We get all that and we're doing the best that there is there is um, there is deliberate uh, thought process going into to helping everybody on that. So I kind of put that slide in there. Uh, priorities and continuous improvement work plan or curriculum instruction, MTSS with an academic focus and student voice with engagement and civil life. And Ms. And Ms. Greenblatt and Mr. Flores have, have taken this and run with it. And, and um, I'll be honest with you, I believe um, this is, it's been 
probably one of my weaknesses through the years, but I'm shoring it up this year as we kind of do it and then we forget about it. We're not doing that anymore. Um, I, I, we have the ability to do something about that. And so what we're going to do is we actually have a CIW report every month to the, to the LSC. And so that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to ask Jenny uh, Greenblatt and Mr. Uh, Eric Flores to kind of pop in and give us their CIW P report, which they normally would, but it fits in right now. So I'm going to be quiet because my mouth hurts and my eyes hurt. So go ahead, uh, guys. Hang on, let me get you guys. Great, thank you, Mr. Grishaber and Ms. Fern. Um, so since last month, um, we have met with the three CIWP uh, priority small groups. Um, we've reviewed the action plan uh, for each priority and we've discussed the adjustments um, given the remote uh, learning status. So um, all three of the groups, um, you know, we've been, we have been meeting regularly. It's been um, where we get a lot of ideas and a lot of collaboration uh, from the team members. And so we'll just go ahead and go through um, each group and just kind of like the highlights of what we talked about uh, this, this month. So for the MTSS, MTSS group or multi-tiered systems of support um, with an academic focus, um, you know, one thing we realized as we worked through kind of with um, CAT, our culture and climate, uh, director and um, with Diana, um, our um, school social worker, one of our school social workers, we realized, you know, for this to be a full, um, you know, team, we needed to add some teacher voices to this particular um, small, uh, small group. So, so we're in the process of doing that. Um, you know, we're really working towards, um, you know, with, you know, out of, out of this group came the idea of the ATL day. And so, um, you know, really um, adding on some academic tier one supports, um, grounding the approaches to learning day um, um, in that idea. You know, it's really where we kind of got the um, idea of what's going to happen tomorrow for the ATL day. Um, so speaking of that, you know, it was, re you know, that was a response, like Mr. G said, um, to feedback that we've heard from students and from teachers and from families. Um, and so we wanted to, you know, we saw that as an opportunity to support um, the action plan for our MTSS plan. Um, and we also wanted to give uh, the students and the staff an opportunity to, to hit pause, um, you know, during this time, like, like Mr. G just said, um, in, with remote learning. Um, Jenny, I'll turn it over you, to you for student voice engagement and civil, and civic life. Sure. So. Um, we, in our small group meeting for student voice engagement and civic life, we um, again revisited the action plan and one of the um, pieces of that action plan was to have a student focus group to, um, to really kind of do a curriculum review. Um, and so what we realized is we needed a subcommittee to create a TAF specific tool um, to really look at our curriculum and, and assess how well does our curriculum reflect the diversity of our student body? How culturally relevant and responsive is it? Um, and so that subcommittee is being formed um, right now. And then they're gonna create two kind of task specific tools. So one will be for the curriculum uh, priority small group to kind of use with their action plan um, for teachers. And then the other will be a student version um, for that curriculum focus group of students that the um, student voice engagement and civic life small group is working on. So that committee is going to meet next week um, to start that process. Um, and then our EOS partnership. So we met with the EOS team yesterday. Um, it was really great. We got some, some preliminary survey results. We've had 45% of our students and 60% of our staff complete the EOS survey. Um, so we were able to start some conversations around the barriers to um, IB diploma and AP classes here at Taft. Um, and so we are going, we have an extension for the survey. So it's going to be open through next week. Um, so we'll be making a final push over the next um, seven, school, eight school days to really try to get to 100% participation in that. So the it uh, not only gives us school-wide data, but we get an individual kind of report per student as to their interests um, and their kind of perception and um, ideas and experience here at Taft. So we're really excited about that. Um, I'll turn it back to 
Um, Eric, if you have any things to wrap up. Yeah, no, I, you know, I think the EOS partnership, um, like Jenny said, and like Mark has referenced to is really, that partnership is the key driver um, to ensuring equity across all four of our CIWP priority groups moving forward and just, you know, for our school in general. Um, and I'm really looking forward to continuing uh, the professional learning that um, our equity team um, is going through and receiving um, on a monthly basis. And I think that that work is, is, like I said, just going to be really beneficial to, to our school and ultimately to our students. So I think that's, uh, that's all we got for CIWP. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Uh, and thank you, Jenny. Um, a couple of quick things I forgot. Um, I wanted to say real quick that this year we did hire 38 new teachers. I mean, uh, um, I think eight of those teachers was a direct result of Ms. Hess uh, becoming like a pit bull as far as like getting those numbers together and getting the CPS and just hounding them every day. So our DL, we just hired our last DL teacher. We had the last interview, I think last Friday, we just hired Patrick. Uh, wonderful. We, we hired two teachers that are graduating in December. Uh, so that's where we were down to. But um, because the, the barrel was a little bit, I'm not going to hire a teacher on, on this campus if they're not like a rock star, like every other teacher on this campus, I'm not going to do it. And so we were waiting and waiting, but we got these two uh, teachers like six months before anybody else got to interview them. So I really feel good about that. And that's because of Ms. Hess, she kind of said, well, let's get these kids that are, not kids, but teachers that are graduating like midterms. And so we've got a couple of rock stars that are really good. And so I wanted to say that, uh, put a, a, a thank you out to a lot of the, the teachers, um, not only the, doing the work, but some teachers were like, like um, I like that old book, like who moved my cheese? Uh, if anybody knows what that is. I moved some teachers cheese. I, I moved cheese out of the state for a lot of these teachers. Like, <clears throat> like a big thank you goes out to Mr. Duarte for, for taking a, a step out of the dean and becoming a counselor. And, and Ms. Francis also taking a step out of the deans and going into individuals and society. Mr. Madden um, uh, jumping from athletic director back into the classroom. So um, I just I just want to put a big thank you out there. And I'll put a plug out there for Ms. Devine's uh, yoga class tomorrow. Go go yoga, go Ms. Devine. So, all right, let me continue here on this. Uh, on this uh, I'm going to go with capital improvements right now. When I talk about this, um, again, this would have been a lot of numbers and stuff and you would have all been bored last year, but this COVID has given us the unique opportunity right now. There's always a good that comes out of a, out of, out of a, out of a, a icky situation. And one of the goods was, is that we actually had the whole campus to ourselves. Now I walked around there today with Mr. Levins and I said, this is like walking around the Titanic. It's depressing. There's no kids around and it's just, but the good news is there's no kids around. When we normally would do capital improvements, we would have to wait till the end of the year to find out how much money we would have. And then we would have to try to cram it in, try to have a special meeting. And then we'd have to cram it into like a two or three week period after school ended, before the camp started, and then before school started. But we were really kind of depressed. So the opportunity of this pandemic really helped us out because for a couple of things, A, we have a, we have a blank slate and nobody's on the campuses. Um, and number two, we have labor, we have uh, security is helping us. I think we have 14 members of the security team helping us. Our custodian crew can only clean up so much. I mean, if nobody's in the building, there's really nothing to clean up. So they're helping us move stuff and get things reorganized. Our engineers are doing a great job. So this is really a great opportunity that we're gonna seize to let's take care of a lot of these capital expenses. And then we don't have to worry about it going forward. The, uh, a couple of things have, have that people need to understand. We got freshmen that are coming from the freshman academy that is just brand spanking new. We can't have them come to our campus and our campus is not up to par. I mean, I just, you know, it, and, and, and just to be honest with you, I'm not a historian on TAP, but it was, it was kind of decrepit in a lot of areas. And I know why, because the budget was spent on areas that you need to spend it on. I get that. But in the meantime, nobody was, was spending money on the campus. Um, and so we really need, we really need to do that. Um, so it said, Mark, reshape your screen. Is that better? Is that okay? Uh, you're fine. I don't know what that Okay. Was. Okay. So um, I'm saying that this is a unique opportunity when we need to do that. So that's why I'm advocating for the next, until, the, until our students come back, to spend what money we have onto getting this campus up to shore 
and to where we need to do it. And then we don't have to worry about it because we do have some critical needs on this, on this campus that need to get done and this is the time to do it. So the, the last part of this presentation is gonna be kind of what we did in the last year and then where we wanna go in the next year. So let me, let me start sharing again and we'll, get, we'll crank through this thing real quick. Okay, so these are our capital improvements right now. Uh, so right now, last year, if you remember, so I'm just gonna recap for, for some people. We got those four lights installed by uh, uh, Len Winslow. Uh, so $300,000, he donated that, uh, him and his family. So, uh, and also the fence. You can see that fence around it right there. Uh, not quite a deterrent to keep kids out from hopping it, but it is, it is good because we don't have dogs on there and stuff like that. So it, it is doing what it needs to do. Um, we had the varsity parking lot, uh, varsity campus parking lots done. So the engineer's lot was done real nice. And then also we finally got that driver's ed lot done uh, after a year and a half of, of, of going through some, some uh, rigorous negotiations. So that was done last year. Uh, we got the new flagpoles. Again, those old ones were almost falling over. So brand new flagpoles. Uh, varsity campus physical education department, bad carpeting in there. I'm a, I'm a believer that there should be no more carpeting in any school period. But uh, that looks nice. We've got brand new chairs up there. We've got every one of the PE department uh, has a brand new, one of those um, new um, new fangled like gaming chairs, which are real comfortable. So we just moved those up today. Um, half Freshman Academy walkway. So it's done. Um, and so it's looking good. Uh, they, they do have to put the lights in there. I, I know this is an overhead view that Mr. Glowitz took, uh, but we're glad that that's done. Uh, so Varsity Campus main office. Uh, that's what the floor looks like now. We put some new furniture in there. So the other ones were kind of falling, falling apart. So those are real comfortable. So it looks really nice, really inviting because a lot of times that's the first impression people get walking in Taft and it should be uh, a, a pleasing environment. So uh, that's the main office. Uh, the forum we also had done, got the carpeting out of there. That looks really nice. Um, you know, if I had my way, and again, we'll, we'll talk about this later. I want that to be a daycare center for our teachers. Uh, and their kids, but we'll talk about that later. Nothing in the plans right now, but I'm thinking. Um, here's how the uh, here's our varsity campus library <coughs> media center. This is how the carpeting list used to look like. And if you could just draw your attention to that left picture over there, look at how the gray carpeting over here. Look at how this was where those computers were. It was it was pretty bad. And like Pat said, it was washed every year and it was still bad. So we pulled all that out of there. We've been wanting to do that. And again, we would not be able to do this most normal years because <coughs> it takes too long and, and we don't just, just don't have the time. So now we do. Uh, so we paid $26,000 to get the floors done. So that's a little bit of the renovation. They had to strip all the carpeting off. Uh, they did that. And so that's what it kind of looks like right now. Uh, it, it looks beautiful and that's without wax on it. Uh, we also had the two, a couple of rooms done. So the hallway uh, that connects the, uh, like, uh, the English department room back there and around the corner. And then also they used to be uh, the old music office and then it, it was a storage unit. And then also that was the president's room over there. Uh, we used to have the PE uniforms and a couple of years ago we had a conference table. So that was all done. So it's gonna get waxed, it's gonna look beautiful. Um, this is what the APR used to look like. Uh, that one wall right there with the yellow on it. And it's just, um, you know, it's just, it's just terrible. But we moved all those books out and again, this was Ms. Greenblatt's idea. We, you know, the uh, library said that we could throw away these 2,000 books if you want to, that they're obsolete. And it's just the teacher and me could not throw that away. And it just, it just didn't sit right. So we just, we had the security team and the, and the custodians organize them by color. So I don't know what's in those books, but when teachers come back, they can pick through them. And if they want to take any of the books, they can. Um, I would have I would have had them come in, but again with the COVID restrictions, I can't have teachers come in and and uh, and, and and touching things like that. It's not safe. So we did them by color. So that's the one side, and then that's the other side where we had those black memory cabinets, uh, generational cabinets. Now it's got the backing of the books where aesthetically it looks pleasing, and I like the way the uh, uh, security did that. They made the American flag on that the last three there, which is which is kind of clever. Like I said, give somebody a, a job to do. Don't micromanage them and watch what happens. So nice job, security team and custodians. Uh, athletic director's office, we finally got that office cleared out. Like I said, in budget, 99.9% .9 of all schools in the universe have their athletic director's office right near the gym and ours was upstairs. It needed to be next door, especially since our athletic director is usually here on Saturdays uh, with the CPS uh, school. So we needed to make that one. So we moved the PE department up to their office, which we just renovated, which I just showed you. So that's a new office there. 
Uh, varsity field was terrible uh, for a lot of reasons. I mean, uh, 30 years of playing football on there. I can't believe the football team used to practice on that, but, you know, twisted ankles and stuff. Uh, the overhead view, it was, it was terrible. There were rocks on there and stuff. So we, you, you all approved an $18,000 uh, renovation out there. They came out. And also, uh, it's, I think it's Go Right is the name of it. They said, Mr. G, can we, we do a couple other patches on here? Would you mind? I said, go ahead. So the little other white strips on there is, is what they went above and beyond. Uh, so they are watering that three times a week. Uh, so hopefully when we come back, um, what I, honestly, it's going to look a lot better than it did. But it may just happen to be that we have the nicest grass in the middle right there and then not the nicest grass on both sides. But hey, it's better than having stones out there. But we'll see how that turns out. Um, we reconstructed the campus bushes around the, um, around the school. We were, it was like bush, 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 missing, 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 bush, missing, bush, missing. So we had the go right, go around and replace a lot of the bushes around there so that uh, there is continuity going around the school and we're, we don't look like a, like a third world country when you're walking around the outside of our campus. I mean, I want, I want the wow factor when the kids come back that wow, this, and even when they come over from the freshman to campus. Like I said in the budget committee, we can't touch what the freshman academy has as far as newness goes, but freshman campus cannot touch what the varsity campus has in as in its tradition and just and just a beautiful older uh, CPS school. Um, we, we changed the dugouts last year um, on both uh, the baseball and the softball where the kids aren't sitting in mud when it rains, it's pea gravel right there. So the water drains out of there. So that's a, that's a big help. Uh, athletic field uh, on the TFA. We, we're going to get the sprinklers on there. They gave us four sprinklers. Uh, we needed eight. Um, so we, you guys approved that uh, and ladies approved that last uh, two, two months ago. And so that's going to get ordered and done and, and, the, and it's going to look really nice over there. Uh, the, the staff freshman campus is really, it's really going to be sharp uh, coming in uh, and into the next spring. Um, what does the future hold? So this is really what I want to talk to everybody about where we're going to go until maybe the kids come back and, and maybe a couple years after that, because this is where really my, my 2025 vision comes in. Um, so this is actually on my wall in, in, my, in my office. And this is kind of like, the, you know, they had the Battle of Normandy. This is, I have the Battle of Taft landscaping on my wall right there. So I'm gonna look at every little part right there, but this is what's on my wall, um, which kind of gives us an overview. So this is what I want to get into right now as far as future projects go. Um, so it's a little bit bigger. But on our campus right now, we have we had in the spring 75 trees around our campus. So I did not count these ones on the bottom here because they're officially not on our campus. Wherever the sidewalk is and then in, we have 75 trees around there. We lost, we used to have about 90, but we lost about 15 to some diseases a couple of years ago. CPS came in and helped us out by chopping down the trees, but they left the stumps there. Thank you, CPS. And so we had to get the stumps removed first get that ground, uh, you know, ground down and grass seed put in. And so last spring, I put five trees in right here in the front along Hurlbutt and along Natoma. So one, two, three, four, five, where some of the trees were cut down. Uh, about a week and a half ago, I had five more planted, three along Northcott here, along these houses right here. And then we've got two on the side over here by the parking lot. So the kids would come out here when they go to the bus station so they're going to have two right there. A lot of people sit there with their lawn chairs and watch the softball games. Hopefully in a couple of years right now, these will be two really nice shade trees for everybody to sit underneath it. But again, that will be right now we have 85 trees. So I want to get to 125. So it's basically about 10 trees every year. I want to add around the campus. There's plenty of room out there. Like I told the budget committee, I want this, I want this campus to look like in the fall time, a bowl of fruit loops. I want all these flower trees to when everybody walks around this campus, I want everybody saying this is a beautiful high school. And I think we can do that. And I think we can do that with trees. So that's, that's the, uh, the, the trees. Um, this is our uh, five new trees on the front of the campus. Uh, this is two of them. But again, it looks a lot nicer than stump sticking out. And it looks like we were bombed like in World War II or something, these craters out there. So that looks a lot nicer. Uh, and then the trees, uh, right now I'm looking at the, uh, of the softball field and then this, this way I'm right down the uh, left field line of the softball field. So we're going to have trees all along that fence there that kind of uh, that kind of uh, boxes in the whole area. <clears throat> There's the uh, alumni clock that we agreed to purchase uh, last month. Um, that's a, a, a picture of it. Obviously it's not up, although they did a nice job of it. Um, I thought that they, it, they cost about $21,000 to get it right now. That company, which is called Verden, 
is, is ironically out of Cincinnati. Um, they're the like number one clock manufacturer in the, in the United States uh, from Cincinnati, which is the birthplace of William Howard Taft, which I thought was kind of ironic. Uh, but they came and they scoped it out. So it's gonna say alumni clock on it. Um, I, I may eventually put a little sign underneath it that says school starts at 7.30 for everybody walking in with those uh -huh. lattes and all that stuff. Uh, but eventually, so we got to get a, we're getting a price right now on how much it's going to cost. I thought it would be easy to run the electric right from that pole <clears throat> to the clock, but Pat, uh, Mr. Levins tells me it's a little more expensive than I thought. So we'll find the money for that. We, uh, our, our alumni are still pouring in money. We're going to hit another appeal through the alumni newsletter uh, this, I think this December it's going to go out. So I think we should be having some more money come in. Uh, I think the alumni association is really uh, uh, en endeared by it. So uh, that's one way. Um, the next thing I want to talk about are three areas of the company or the campus that I think need to get renovated uh, to make us really pop. Uh, the problem with with doing things around the campus, it's like when you do something in your house when you like like fix a wall up or something. Now you start noticing the other walls are not as good as they should be and stuff like that. So it's kind of where we're at right now. So there's three areas of the campus, actually four, that I want to talk about. Uh, so the first one is Hurlbut and Natoma. So if you can visualize that Hurlbut and Natoma over there it's, it's like across the street is the hockey rink but if, if you were in the hockey rink right now you could look at our school you wouldn't even know what that school was mm -hmm. and so what we need is we need like a, a little brick sign over there and I think I can get alumni association alumni groups to pay for that like I can go to the class of 59 and say <clears throat> or 65 or 72 has their 50th coming up um it's it's an old adage uh at St. Pat's you bring the alumni groups back you make them cry and their checkbooks open up so that's what we plan on doing, getting them back here. So we can get the alumni groups to pay for some of that. That right there might cost anywhere between 20, 10 and $15,000. You know, you get an alumni group, that would be kind of chump change to some people. Some people just might write the check themselves. Other people donate $100 or $10 and it's all good. But I'd like that to say, uh, you know, William Howard Taft High School, you know, donated by the alumni class and stuff. But every year uh, I would have our gardening department make sure that all seasonal flowers are up there so it really looks nice every year. The next one is on the bottom left hand corner right here and and what, where we need this one is Natoma and Bryn Mawr where a lot of kids cross the expressway right there uh, when they cross the expressway it's kind of weird it always reminds me of when I first thought it was like um, that movie where they played baseball in Iowa uh, Field of Dreams I think it was and like the people just disappear into the into the into the uh, cornfield just I saw kids like walking across the street and they're like disappearing through the bushes and I'm like where are they going and so that's really all they see. So we got to trim some of those bushes back and then we can put this thing right there, this little sign there, again, 10, $15,000, maybe $20,000. We get the alumni groups to pay for it, have it flowered up. So when you're driving on any one of those streets, which is probably some of our busiest streets here, you know that this is William Howard Taft High School. And, and, and you're like, oh, okay, I get it. You're the, you are beautiful school. Okay, I get it. So that needs to be uh, up there too. The last one is the bottom right-hand side. This is the entrance that I would like to get on the varsity campus field. Um, I, those, that's, that's a little big than, bigger than I wanted, but I was trying to get some kind of an idea. And I don't even know why that one side is bigger than the other. It's just kind of weird. But, but I would like to get like some kind of an arch going across the top. And I would like to put on their Wislow family field since he already donated $300,000 towards that, towards that field. Um, and he's also going to donate more money to us. He's promised us th that today. Uh, he's, he's got a, a COVID spending limit, <clears throat> according to his tax attorney, or he would have given us more money this year. But I think I think he's earned it, and I think that's just the grand entrance into the uh, varsity uh, campus, which would be nice. And then about five feet in from on the right hand side, if you can see, there's like a little thing right there. Ours would be a little taller and a little thinner, but that would be where the Taft Rock is at, where when everybody walks in. I think it's a Clemson um, a tradition, but everybody that walks in there, when they go to the stands, they all touch the top of the rock, and that's supposed to be for good luck for you. So I'm thinking that Mr. Wislow will pay for that. He's already offered to give $10,000 for another project uh, for the school, which I think is already going to be funded. So I think I can get him to pay for that. So these would all be alumni based. Uh, last thing I want, I would like to get uh, when I'm looking on the overhead is right in the middle here. If you can kind of see this little patchy green part, I've, I've mentioned this before. I'd like a golf putting green in there for our golf team. Golf team and bowling team are the only two teams that have to go off campus to practice. And I would like to be able to have our, our golf team, boys and girls, be able to putt there and chip there. Uh, when you golf, it's over 50% of your shots are, are chipping or putting. So if we had one right there, 
uh, it would be really nice. I think we'd be the only school that had that. And we would be like, wow, that'd be my second level stuff. It's about $25,000 when I had it spec out. I had one alumni agree to pay 5,000 if somebody else pays 5,000. So I haven't even begun to fundraise for that. I'm gonna hit up some of our golf teams. Uh, if anybody knows anything about our, our uh, background, we had a uh, back to back to back golf team uh, city championships in the 50s. So I'm gonna hit them up uh, for that. Uh, varsity campus field in between the two. Uh, uh, tennis courts, I'd like a, like a, a, a metal sign going across, laser cut that either says convocation field, which as everybody knows is a, is a flock of eagles. You would never say, hey, there's a flock of eagles. You would say a convocation of eagles. So, or it could say Grabowski field or whoever wants to help us with the funding there, uh, uh, we can, that would be up for sale there. Uh, door four entrance is, is deplorable right now. We just got that, 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 uh, whatever that pit is over there used to be it used to be bushes i don't even know what that was but we got it uh taken out and i was thinking about something like this uh so we can have socratic seminars um uh there to where a lot of teachers like to go out by door four or door number one and teach their classes on the first like 70 degree spring day or a nice fall day uh i would have to we'd have to trick it out so our skateboarders out there wouldn't just be salivating when they seen that i'd have to fix it so that they, they wouldn't find it attractive enough to, to skateboard on it. You could put bumps and ripples on it, but a lot of people that build this know how to make it skateboarder kid proof. So that would be something I'd like to put right there. Um, this is something I'm gonna, I'm gonna have the art department do when they come back. This is a satellite view of our school. I want them to go on the roof and, and put on Taft Eagles in blue out there. So our satellites for now on can see that we are Taft Eagles. And also every United Airlines flight that passes over our, our school every 15 seconds can see that this is the Taft Eagles. Uh, that's just a baby project, so that's this fun one. Uh, custodian locker room. <clears throat> this is this is this one I'm embarrassed by. I should have caught this one earlier, but I didn't. It was one of the first things I did at Whitney Young when I was in charge of facilities here, and I've let this go um, six or seven years now. Um, this is the locker room for 14 people, uh, seven uh, women and, and seven men, uh, and that's deplorable. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to trick this out. Every every custodian, male custodian is gonna have a double sized locker with their name on it. And this is all gonna be beautiful. And we're gonna make, uh, a, so they can actually eat their lunch in there. Or they don't have to find a classroom to eat their lunch on. Uh, and then on the third floor, we're gonna make the same thing for the seven women that we have on campus too. So they have their own locker room. So that's gonna be high on my priority list as far as, as, far as getting done. Uh, they've been ignored too long and they are the backbone of our school. So I take the hit on that one, but it's, it's gonna end uh, next couple of months. Um, varsity boys locker room. Um, first floor the, the ladies on the first floor over there by door number eight uh, off of the gym is really nice it, it's updated uh this one is not this is from a, a bygone era where all you had was a, a pair of uh uh i think they called them gym shoes back then and then uh, <laughs> a, a bunch of books with a leather strap around it and you put the books in there and take your gym shoes out and put your your penny loafers in i don't know if guys work i don't know what that is but, but anyway you put your shoes in there <clears throat> this all has to get gutted out and it has to be updated. So that's going to be really high in the priority list because we need something for our kids when they come back. Because right now the one downstairs is not usable. It's got too much mold on it. And we have to really get the, uh, <coughs> the, the, uh, the gymnasium uh, system figured out first before we can even start downstairs. Um, this I just put on there because I noticed it's walking out today. We got to get these letters polished out in front. It looks, it looks terrible and it's going to get repolished. Um, this is something I want to do for when the kids get back uh, on the varsity campus. I want to remove four tables by the windows over there and I want to put a stage in there. I want to put a piano up there. If anybody's been ever been on the uh, freshman campus, any passing period, you'll have three or four kids that are fighting to play the piano quite well. And it sounds wonderfully. And I'd love to get a piano up there uh, that kids could play piano during lunch period. Uh, we can also have a mic up there and so kids could play guitar. To, uh, I could have the performing arts department if anybody wanted to, to go up there during some of their lunch periods and play. And, and uh, so I think it'd be really nice for our kids to have a little entertainment while they're, while they're texting and eating. Um, this is what the, the part of the theater that um, is the one third of the theater, which has been a vision of mine for a while. I want to get a 60 seat theater in there. Um, this is the, the theater that we built at Whitney Young. This only has about 35 seats in it, but you get kind of an idea how it's three rows tiered up. Um, this is another view, and then this is the view behind the teacher station right there. 
we would use this in a number of ways. Um, uh, again, I call, I'm calling it the Jim Jacobs Theater because I'm going to hit up Mr. Jacobs, uh, the, the, the writer of Greece, um, and kind of and kind of maybe try to give him a little guilt trip and see if he can't come back and give us a little bit of money for the Jim Jacobs Theater to help us with this. Uh, but we may ask for some funding uh, in the meantime uh, from the uh, LSC board. But uh, I would like to see all of our film classes in there. I would like to see a parent university in there after school or at night to where we can teach parents uh, different skill sets. Maybe we can teach English language learner parents uh, you know, some language courses. We can also teach parents. How about teaching parents how to go on, on uh, Snapchat and figure out what your kids are doing on there? That'd be a, a well-attended class that we can, you know, uh, figure it out. But uh, that would be a nice area right there. We could also have departments use that. We could also use it for professional development for our teachers if we ever divide it up. You know, a lot of times we have some teachers meet in the auditorium, then the forum, then the, then the other room, and then in the library, and now this room. So it'd be a great area to have it, uh, a, a theater. I'm actually thinking about, about a Super Bowl party, but that's something else. Uh, this is concession stand and storage on the um, uh, next to the uh, field over there on the varsity campus. This is the next level right here. I, I just put this picture in. This as this isn't any scope or anything, but um, I see it as a place that uh, when games are not just football games and Friday night games, but soccer games and the, and the band out there and, and everybody rugby out there. I think we had two doors like that. One door opens up and you're selling uh, concession stands. It's got water, running water in there. So you've got concessions. I like hot chocolate on the Friday night lights, but I'm looking at hot dogs and nachos and all of those stuff. The other one would be selling tap swag uh, that people line up for uh, and get. And, and so we could be making money on this thing too. Right now, I do have a sophomore parent that said uh, with a cigar in his mouth, I got 50 grand right now committed towards your concession stand. So um, hopefully they come through if I had uh, if I had all the money that was promised to me by parents over the years, I'd be a, the schools would look unbelievable, but you know, sometimes, and, and but that was again before COVID. Um, so we will see if, if that money still stands, but again, uh, this is something that may cost us a little money, but in the end, it would raise us a lot of money. So the reason why I put these slides in here, um, is to show everybody that we, we already, well, let me, let me do one more. This is, um, this is my. This is our dream. Uh, Mr. Raguso is and I are spearheading this. This is a, a natatorium, uh, which is a fancy word I just learned last year. But it's it's basically a, a indoor Olympic sized pool that would be nice on the freshman campus. I'm going to pitch it not right now. It's all about timing right now. I don't think CPS is in a big hurry to give Taft any more money. But eventually, maybe after a year or two, we can hit them up because I really think it's an equity thing. I did a Freedom of Information Act on all the schools in CPS that have uh, fuller or bigger pools. And the four biggest pools are all select enrollment schools. Coincidentally, all three of those schools always win first, second, and third prize in CPS swimming. And I think it's an equity thing that a neighborhood school has to swim out of a, a bathtub. But again, that's, that's me, I'm advocating for that. But I think we can also use it as a, as a facility for all CPS to have our swimming championships in CPS there every year. And like I said, we need to dream big. We need to have in the, in the 2024, 2028, 2032 Olympics, we need to have CPS swimmers uh, going for the gold. And I think that they might, they might bite on that. The reason why I say this, and I'm gonna wrap this up because I've been talking a lot, is right now we've had an architectural firm give us um, some drawings. They said that they will give us the scope and sequence drawings that we need for five areas right now. So one is the locker room downstairs that we need to revamp. It's, it's terrible and, and I've walked you down there and, and I remember your faces, you were holding your noses, saying, Mr. G, this is terrible. We need to get that fixed. Before we can do that, we need to get the gym uh, system, the air conditioning. It's not just air conditioning, but it's climate control for everything fixed before we can do that. So they're gonna do a scope and sequence for that. They're gonna do a scope and sequence for the concession stands out there with varying levels. One will be like 50,000, 100,000, 150,000 dollars and what that entails. One's going to be for the drama lab and then one is going to be for the Jim Jacobs theater. So I'm going to be asking you probably next month to buck up $22,000 for those architectural plans to get those done because any one of those projects is going to be more than $25,000. And when they're more than $25,000, you have to go through a bidding process. And one of the ways you have to do it is to have a scope and sequence already done. So it's kind of like the first domino that has to fall 
for some of these big projects to be done. But I think right now, if we get the majority of these done with 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 the exception of the natatorium, I think I think Taft is set up really for the next 40 years to where you really wouldn't have to do anything, uh, you know, because we took care of a lot of the capital. So I know that we're going to do a lot of capital this last year and the year coming. But again, this is an investment right now. So years coming, we don't have to keep doing this. Like it's kind of like let's let's pay for it, the foundation so it's really nice and we can build on it later. So that is all I have. The last slide right now is um, a happy holiday slide. Um, you know, this is not the one I sent out because it, with the Noel, I sent one out without the Noel on there. But anyway, um, what we're going to do is everybody on the LSC, all of our uh, teachers, all of our staff members. Uh, selected a few of our alumni um, using that give money to us, and I'll just put that out there, are going to get a monthly postcard from us, uh, from Taft, and it's going to be uh, different pictures. I have some of, of, um, of International Night, some of the lacrosse team, some of African American Night. I have, I have all these different pictures. I have ones from different eras, too, from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. So once a month, you're going to be getting a postcard in the mail from Taft, so collect these because I think they're going to be collector's items. Um, so you're going to have a whole set of them. I think the set is going to be 36. So for the next three years, we're going to mail these out here. So I'm just telling you, when we meet in 2039 for a hundredth anniversary, people start bringing those sets and I need to sell those sets for some money. I am done. I'm exhausted. My eyes hurt. Do you have any questions? Yes, we have a couple questions. Uh, so, Mr. Davidovic first. Uh, I was just wondering why would you, uh, consider putting that pool at the freshman academy or the freshman campus and not uh, at our varsity campus. Because I think we, because we have this, we have the space there. We really do. And what's, and, and it's, it's really double folded right now. The one thing the freshman campus doesn't have is parking. So if we can get the natatorium there, they're going to have to put parking there. And so now we've got parking for the campus and it, so it is, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky way to get more parking, but if they have the space there for it, it's a natural. That's the hardest thing, I think, when, when uh, procurement is looking for a new uh, project and where are we going to put it? We've got the spot. It's perfect right there. So that's why we're picking for that right now. The I, other I, one, because I, hold on, Gordon. I did have people come out and try to see how much would it cost to do our pool if we expanded our pool. And it was too much because it, you'd have to move load bearing walls to increase that pool and that wasn't an option. The only other option would be to go out into the driver's ed lot uh, pretty far to where now you would you would cannibalize that lot. So logically, the best place to do it would be the freshman academy going. I would just be careful uh, because we know anything could happen, especially when CPS is at the helm. And yeah. if they do change, uh, if there is a change where they make that school its own self-independent potentially, any you know high school uh, i don't want us to take the hit on that you know i'm about taft high school and that's why I'd, i would rather see it on, on the varsity campus just in case because you know what's going to happen because that could potentially happen because anything could happen in this broken system that we're in thank you okay another question from mrs strata yeah i just wanted to confirm that the scope that we would get from the architect firm is for the entire library and not just the theater portion of it Yes, it is. It's the entire library because um, one of the sections I want, and the, I mean, like I said, I, I, I talked about this. It has to be a kid. It, it has to be an area where it's, my vision is it's a wow factor for the kids, where the kids come here and go, wow. It's, it's got to be a, an area where kids could chill. Like we're not going to have sections of like computers in there. I don't want that because that's absolutely, we're going to have kids if they want to, they can check out a Chromebook and go sit in an area of the school. I envision it to be like a Starbucks where the kids can kind of sit there. I don't know whether or not I can sell coffee or, or hot chocolate in there, but I would kind of like an area where the kids could do that. The front area right there <clears throat> is gonna be an, a, a revolving art department display to where it's behind glass. The art department could put like a monthly display back there. I've also just ordered six mannequins because we're gonna put uh, like tapped old, old memorabilia on these mannequins so people can walk in and go oh, look at the cheerleading outfit from the 1950s and stuff like that so it really is going to be like the boardwalk of the varsity campus when you walk in there that's where we're going to want a lot of people walking through it so it, yeah it is for the entire campus Chrissy. thank, thank you. you any more questions from the lsc mm -hmm. okay uh all right that was principal report now we'll run to the through the committee reports 
uh, budget finance, Ms. Estrada? I think Mr. G has pretty much covered all of the things we've talked about this evening. Okay. And then okay. so. Again, if any LSC members have questions, please state so in the chat. Yeah, just keep in mind, we'll be having a call some type of special meeting if they want to request a 22-5 for the architecture firm. Okay. Okay, uh, facilities committee, Ms. Raguso, let me unmute you. Thank you, Madam Chair. We met today at 4.30. Uh, just as a reminder, everyone's welcome. A lot of information is shared. <laughs> uh, Principal G clearly went above and beyond in his report tonight, um, but uh, I encourage you to attend. Um, the At the Freshman Academy, we had some issues with the heat. Uh, it had to do with some compressors. They've since last meeting, it's been fixed, so we're all good to go. Uh, the next major project at the Freshman Academy would be the atrium glass repair, which currently uh, Mr. Levins is working with the team on. Um, the walking path, as Principal G mentioned, the final um, improvements that need to be made is the electrical. But um, this, I'm, I'm super excited about this uh, construction project because this is gonna provide another means of ingress, egress, for our kids, um, having had a freshman there last year and experience, experiencing the nightmare of, of parking and driving, drop off, this is gonna be a great another alternative for, for parents to drop their kids off safely. Um, so that should be done probably within the next month or so. Plenty of time for when we're back in class. Uh, the track, our new track was certified, which is fantastic. Uh, the other issue that I'm gonna keep pushing Mr. Levins on and Principal G on is that CPS uh, neglected to give us the field events. And you know, you have track and field, we only have track. So we're, we're gonna keep pursuing uh, getting those field events in, um, but typical in typical CPS fashion, it was just not very well thought out. So we're keeping that on the list because that needs to happen. At the varsity campus, um, Principal G went over the exciting developments that are going on. I applaud Principal G and all of, of, of his team uh, that we have a robust capital plan. And it's, it's, you know, it's important that we keep pushing forward and not be complacent where we're at. So I, we'll, we'll be aggressively pursuing these projects. Um, the outdoor lighting is complete, which is great because it's been a safety issue, um, an ongoing issue that's fixed. Um, and for both campuses, uh, Aramark has their snow plans in place. Um, not that we're there, but God willing, we'll be there in the next few months. Um, and that the uh, hybrid rooms, so when the kids go back in um, January, uh, they were totally prepared for social distancing. Um, the custodians have been actively um, ensuring that that the, that the buildings are clean and um, you know COVID as safe as they can be. So we're confident with that. Mm -hmm. That concludes my report, Madam Chair. Any questions? Any questions from the LSC? Okay, thank you. Uh, safety and security, Ms. McDormand, let me unmute you. Okay. Uh, yeah, we met today at 2.30. Uh, there's not much of this changed, obviously, since we're not, you know, students are not on campus. Um, misconduct report, Ms. Woman has sent it out, so everybody should have it. Uh, there's very little misconduct since the last time. Some of it is just tardy issues. Um, she said it's just kids being class clowns, stuff like that. There's nothing, nothing major. Uh, the biggest problem is the students are really struggling with anxiety and depression. So they, the behavioral team is getting a lot more requests um, every week. So that is the one thing that uh, they're getting help with some outside, um, getting some outside clinicians. And uh, we're hoping that um, once everybody's back in school, we can get another social worker hired, but the counselors are being are, uh, more involved now with the, with the behavioral team. Uh, the security it's, the team is still helping out with projects with the school. They're, they're still doing a great job. And just to note, they said the misconducts are mostly from freshmen, but it's just some minor silly stuff. Um, that's pretty much... Uh, 
pretty much about it. Um, Gorn had asked at, at our meeting about, brought up something about voting for SRO again. Just had a question that if somebody wanted to vote on it, what would be, you know, what would happen? So that's just a whole other subject. That would just be something that we'd have to vote to vote. So that was just a question that came up. And pretty much that was about it. Nothing, nothing more. So, thank you. Any questions any from LSE? Okay, thank you. Um, friends of Taft, Ms. Bernanke. Okay. Oh. Okay, can you hear me? Okay, so the Taft PTSA, they're skipping their December meeting. And they had their first restaurant night that went well. Uh, they earned $461 from City Barbecue, and they'll be hosting more of these. They're continuing to move ahead with creating a Friends of Taft group, um, and they will be setting up an online spiritware store. More details will be emailed out and posted on Facebook. So that was that report. And then Ms. Lundy from the Alumni Association said um, Mr. G was invited to join us. So we don't have much news other than the newsletter should be in the mail. So Mr. G, I don't know if you have anything to add with the alumni or she was just saying that she invited you to join to a meeting or something. And that's all I have. Yeah. <clears throat> Can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, she, they have a meeting later on in the week. Uh, what they did was they, um, <clears throat> they, they, promised $2,000, they want to donate $2,000 towards the um, the alumni clock. And I'm, I'm going to ask them if they can not pay $2,000 to the clock, if they could pay $1,500 towards the pedestal where the tap rock would sit in uh, inside, the camp, inside the field, uh, and then an additional $500 towards replacing that new sign that said Hurlbut, and, and not a new sign, but the old one the Taft alumni sign where it says Taft High School, it's like a plastic sign. It's, it's really bad right now. And so they need to give them like a new plastic thing in there. So I'm asking them to kind of not donate towards the clock because I think we have enough money for the clock. If they can just re-divert those funds into, into making that sign a little better and then making a pedestal for the Taft Rock. So that's what that's going to be about. Okay. Yeah. That's all I have. Okay, then we have uh, athletics committee. If there's anything with Mr. Nishibayashi, let me find you. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, you know, I, I really haven't reached out to Mr. Glow about any of the sports just because I've, I've, you know, I'm, I'm aware that not much has been going on with them. Um, so I, I don't have a, an official update on, on any sports related items. Okay. But again, I mean, we're, we're really in a position where, uh, you know, there aren't, there aren't any uh, team sports really going on with the exception of cheerleading, uh, palms, dance, um, bowling um, for boys and girls. So, um, but I, I, they're still in season right now. Okay. I do know that we uh, had a lot of our athletes are now getting their, uh, their scholarships. I know Miss uh, Christina Illoy uh, got a full ride to Wisconsin. Uh, we've got a couple other ones that got rides to uh, um, uh, other universities, uh, the St. Xavier, uh, but they're starting to come out right now with their, with their, um, their, their pledges and stuff. So that's good. We did have an, uh, a state champion uh, diver um, last month, uh, which is amazing considering we don't have a diving board in our, in our pool. Okay. Uh, PPLC, is that also Chad or Marianne? <coughs> Yeah, I, I, that's fine. I could take it. Um, so um, we we had our meeting on Wednesday with uh, Mr. Grishaber, and uh, um, within that meeting, we kind of discussed, uh, you know, obviously our three our three topics. But uh, we we wanted to um, a, a, as a as a PPLC, we we recommended the purchase of Nearpod, uh, which is another online our uh, e learning, you know. Um, uh, service for for you know our, our teachers to kind of use as a resource. Um, however, uh, 
there was a question of how many teachers were actually interested in the software. Um, and, and for that matter, we didn't really have those numbers. So right now, as far as I understand, Mr. Wilson has been um, reaching out to the teachers and trying to get those numbers uh, so, that, so that this will remain on the agenda for next month, for sure, uh, depending on the number of in teachers interested in using a uh, Nearpod. Um, Ms. Neese has also uh, reached out to me this evening um, during that budget meeting, I believe, um, about you know uh, having a survey as well. So there's 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 plenty of things out there right now where where teachers are are going to give their input or will be able to give their input on whether or not they want to have or can, or have Nearpod um, a, as part of uh, of our e-learning packages that we can use as resources for the teachers. Um, <clears throat> so that that's pretty much all we had for budget um, for curriculum. A lot of these things definitely. Um, <clears throat> were hit on with this ATL day. Um, a lot of this stuff was specific to just kind of getting this, the opportunity for students and teachers both alike to, to really kind of step away from the screens because it has been getting uh, a little bit overwhelming. And, you know, just from, from the standpoint of a teacher t talking to their classes, um, even the students not only feel overwhel overwhelmed, excuse me, but they, they're very, they're burnt out. You know, they're getting to that point where they're just kind of restless and, and they're, you know, they're just like, can, can we get to break already? Can we get to break already? So, you know, um, the, the ATL day was something huge that really kind of, <coughs> Uh, the PPLC really was interested in uh, prior to this this even being un, uh, unveiled to us last week. So um, <clears throat> that's one one topic that we did discuss, uh, which was uh, we recommend a synergy day, um, a house assembly stuff like that. So again, the ATL day will fit into that um, that recommendation. Uh, house assemblies, which is something that the freshman academy had uh, monthly last year. <laughs> Um, is something that we also are pushing towards and uh, something that we discussed in our house meetings this week um, was a push towards how are we going to continue with this ATL approach or how are we going to uh, continue with uh, having the students understand, you know, how to uh, kind of uh, organize themselves and just uh, make sure that they're not getting burnt out or overwhelmed. And, uh, you know, that's something that's on the list for house houses uh, moving forward is trying to get that social atmosphere, trying to get the students to kind of be interactive, but also, you know, not just kind of getting in the monotony of, of being in front of that screen for seven classes every single, every, every day. So um, that's, again, something that uh, <clears throat> we're pushing for in the, in the future uh, after break and such. Um, we recommend a PD and survey of curriculum review for diversity by TCT individual members. Uh, this is a continuing of the programming that we discussed from November 23rd. So this is just some, some more things that we just wanted to revisit as a PPLC that we felt um, was, was necessary that, that we kind of push forward with. Um, and something that we all discussed within that meeting was, uh, and, and Marianne, who, who isn't here, um, she suggested that uh, the student voice committee be involved in these discussions. Uh, the CIWP team um, and IB coordinators are working on this as well as, as Mr. Flores and, and Ms. Greenblatt has spoke about earlier. So uh, these are definitely things, you know, that are on, on the list of, of things that admin have, have been working towards. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that the, the things that we are, have discussed have been noted and, and, you know, they are trying to do their best uh, carrying out mm -hmm. the recommendations that we ask of them. Um, and then... Marianne is here if you need her. Oh, yeah. Uh, if, Marianne, if you want to uh, add anything, if I missed anything, by all means, feel free. Um, I, I'm, you know, it's already 812. So, you know, I'm just trying to get through this, you know, as quickly as yeah. I can. Uh, no, you're doing great, Chad. Just so you know, I have the notes open if you need me to, like, refresh your memory on anything. Okay, you're good. I, I, I got to. We're good. So uh, I'm just going to move on to the next the next point then in curriculum, which is uh, we recommend a schedule. Uh, for student me mental health and morale. So this is one thing that we've kind of discussed on, on multiple occasions. Um, and uh, one thing that we, we were suggesting was, you know, the mindset of having this 80-20 split that, uh, that CPS wanted. Um, and we, we've discussed this in, in different, you know, variations, but uh, what we settled on as a PPLC was we wanted to kind of uh, see to it that we make every Wednesday a meeting day. Um, and, uh, uh, sorry, a, a staff meeting schedule, not necessarily a staff meeting, 
meeting on those particular days, but just having that same schedule um, so that, again, the students would be able to get out a little bit earlier um, <clears throat> and, and just kind of, again, just get away from the screen for even just for that, that extra hour, uh, even though it's continuous. Uh, uh, that's something that we decided as a PPLC that would be able to benefit. Uh, however, as we kind of got through this meeting, um, the, the initial you know, statement of, uh, from Mr. Grishaber was just that it, contractually we couldn't do it. You know, it, it doesn't abide by the 50 minutes a day rule that uh, we have to be set in place because we have, well, not necessarily 50 minutes a day. Let me rephrase that. There's a certain amount of minutes that we have to have within a school year. So um, we voted on these staff meeting bells prior to, so last year, um, uh, you know, last school year, we voted on this, assuming that we would be in school. So that's the reason why we were kind of, you know, tied into what we have here. Um, but, we, you know, uh, we, we just know that at this point, contractually, we, we voted on those staff meeting bells to be, you know, only so many. So we can't really adjust the schedule uh, any different than the way that it's already been uh, legally. So um, <clears throat> there were some other points that made, but uh, I, in all honesty, it, it was irrelevant after I heard contractually, uh, we have to abide by this. So I, I'll, I'll be quite honest, I, re I really, you know, I stopped listening after that point uh, within the meeting. Um, <clears throat> but that that is... Uh, the last point of the um, curriculum uh, subject. I don't know if Marianne wanted to add anything. Um, oh, you got it. Um, you got it, Chad. Okay. And then the last last thing is a CIWP, which is uh, we recommend a follow up on TCT house flip, uh, house meeting flips. Um, basically, we just wanted to uh, one meeting. <coughs> excuse me. One meeting for the houses is on Tuesday, and then the um, um, there was another meeting that we had discussed. Uh, where Mr. Render really, you know, was was kind of uh, a driving force in our houses last year, and we wanted him to be a part of them this year, just kind of the continuity of of just the way that the the, the houses worked. Um, so that was one thing that we were kind of missing out on this year, um, in, in comparison to last year, and just kind of how we're kind of progressing with the house system. Um, so. <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the way that we kind of, uh, the way that it was adjusted was that now uh, Mark Caldwell and Addison Spear will uh, be kind of taking the place of a gender writer and, uh, you know, uh, just kind of being that, that, that person that Matt Render used to be for those meetings. So, um, and then as we kind of get down onto this, uh, the last few uh, points, uh, there were some extra points here made by uh, um, Mr. Grisha. Oh, you know what, before I get to that point, um, there was a recommendation for a uh, PD for uh, the CARES is uh, kind of discuss, a CARES committee is, is discussing um, uh, a guest speaker. Um, and at the time that we had the meeting, um, Mr. Grishaver had asked who was the CARES group because uh, we weren't aware. However, um, since then, there's been an email exchange between Mr. Grishaver and Mr. Wilson and just discussing uh, all of the members that are involved and they're all they're all teachers and colleagues um, that are, have kind of been discussing um, what it is that we, we would like to have in, in the uh, future as a, a professional development speaker. Um, and again, the CARES committee is, is uh, um, along the lines of the uh, anti-racist group. So that's, that's uh, the, the premise of the CARES group. All right, and then the last two points uh, Mr. Grishaber had added on to our agenda was um, a, dis a discussion, excuse me, on a no homework over winter break policy. So um, as we kind of approach the, the uh, as we approach the holiday break uh, in the next two weeks, there was a discussion of, uh, you know, making it a, a policy not to have any homework uh, over those, those two weeks. It should literally be a break from work or a break from school. And that's, and that's pretty much on both ends. Um, you know, one thing that we've kind of been discussing uh, within our departments, within you know, all the meetings that we have um, is just how much or how often we are available for our job. You know, we're always at our office. We're always at work um, because we are literally two steps away from our computer. And you know, us being the teachers that we are in this building, you know, we cannot say no to an email in most cases. You know, we're we're not going to say, "Oh, this kid needs my help. Let me just, you know, go about my business." Like that's not really how 
at least as far as I know, the teachers that I've spoken to, that's not how they operate. So, you know, um, and that's that's something that I really think that is going to be very crucial for us to kind of come back in the new year uh, with a new mindset uh, of just kind of having this, this, again, understanding between one another and knowing how difficult and different this really is for the for the both of us, um, teachers and students, that being said. Um, and then uh, the next point uh, that Mr. Grishaber again has added on to our agenda was a uh, discussion on a limit on the per week homework uh, per class for the second semester. So um, basically, you know, uh, <clears throat> if, if you really consider, you really think about it, um, the, the mindset here is if you give an hour of homework for each class at seven hours, you know, that's, that's unreasonable. That's ridiculous. And, and for that matter, as, as a teacher, I've, I've realized that, you know, we started off in the beginning of the quarter and seeing is that it is brand new. Um, there's a lot of things that you have to kind of learn on the way, you know, this is something that no one really kind of thought of. So um, <clears throat> one thing that I, as a teacher have realized and made adjustments to my lessons is I has, I have stopped giving homework because um, one, it, it wasn't benefiting the students grade. Um, and, and for that matter, um, you know, having them wait until 1159 or midnight or, you know, on a Friday when it's due was just, uh, you know, bananas to me. I just couldn't, I, I couldn't understand the mindset. And I've asked the students on multiple occasions, like, why do you do this? You know, you, you have time in class. Um, so again, you know, I just kind of worked my way uh, away from that mindset. It, it's, it's a, a daily assignment type of thing. So I think that's something that um, <clears throat> we all as teachers are, are really start to have to kind of considering as we move forward um, is just kind of uh, veering away from uh, the amount of homework that is that is submitted or given to the students on a regular basis, uh, and and Mr. Grishaber kind of is already aware that there are going to be some students, there, there are going to be some some teachers that are against this policy or against this mindset. But um, at the same time, you know this this is definitely uh, uh, m much different than anybody could have expected. And uh, for that matter, again, you know, just I, I, I was thinking about this the other day. You know, realistically, as a teacher, I, I'm in front of my my computer for the five classes you know, that I, I need to attend, and then after three o'clock. You know, I, I don't necessarily have to be in front of my computer. I'm not, I don't have to do any work. I don't have to, you know, uh, there's no homework requirement for me. So, you know, that that's something that uh, needs to be put in perspective as well. You know, even though that we are, as teachers are in front of the screen at the same amount of time, if not, you know, a little bit less, a little, a little more um, during the school day, uh, we're definitely not on it as much after three o'clock. So that's something that we definitely need to take into account. Um, and, and again, that's that'll that unless Marianne has anything else to add, that's the PPLC agenda. No, you, you hit it all, Chad. Thank you. Well, thanks again, Marianne. You missed it, but we did say thank you so much for all your time and effort and uh, uh, supporting the LSC. So we're, we'll miss you. Well, thank you. We'll, miss you. we'll stay in touch. Okay, great. <laughs> Okay, and then uh, we have the student representative report from Amelia. Let me unmute you. Hi, okay. Um, I'll keep this pretty quick. Um, the first thing I just wanted to cover was picture days coming up um, and between December 14th and the 18th, um, students will be able to go to the varsity campus and get their picture taken for the yearbook. Um, there should be a, um, an informational email in your inbox currently, so you can just get that done anytime you want. And um, to the main part that I wanted to get to, um, I wanted to take this opportunity to summarize the Student Voice Committee's report on the student body to relay their message to admin. Um, they took the time to construct a 15-question survey about the experience of e-learning, and they got 921 responses. Um, there were three main takeaways from the survey that they wanted to communicate to staff. Um, firstly, many respondents reported negative physical and or mental side effects from long hours of screen exposure. And a majority of them also expressed a desire for hard copies of their class materials. Um, second, a third of all respondents were interested in having more ways to communicate with their teachers in a virtual face-to-face -face setting. And finally, students ranked the e-learning resources that worked for the best for them. And by popularity, the best three resources for students were Pear Deck, um, Kahoot, and Jamboard. 
Um, however, the SVC notes that the use of these resources varies from classroom to classroom and isn't universally applicable to all courses. Um, also, one last thing, the SBC is also currently hosting a survey for teachers. So if you are a teacher, I encourage you to respond so we have a better understanding of how we can improve e-learning for everyone at TAPT. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> Great, thank you. Any questions from the LSC there? Okay, uh, moving on. Almost done, everybody hang in there. Uh, old business. Um, I don't think we had any old business or any new business. And uh, Mr. Davidovic has asked for a minute to speak, so I'm going to let him do that now. Okay. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yep. Great. I'd just like to take this opportunity and uh, give a few words. It's going to be more than a minute, so please, please bear with me after 10 and a half years. I've collected a lot of information, so I hope you uh, just bear with me for the end here. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to uh, <clears throat> say thanks again for giving me a, a few minutes. Uh, 10 years has come and gone quicker than I had anticipated. And um, when I ran for local school council um, as a community rep back in 2010, many people didn't realize why I was running for the local school council. In fact, some were questioning why I was running. What they didn't know was prior to me serving on this local school council, I served as a beat facilitator in Chicago's CAPS program. At that time, I was probably the youngest, if, uh, if not one of the youngest uh, beat facilitators in the city. What they didn't know was that prior to me trying to serve on the local school council, that I had served on my parish executive board. Our parish is home to over 1,600 families. What they didn't know was how important I knew it was to have a seat at the table, an opportunity to be heard, and simply an opportunity to do something good. What they didn't know was that I truly wanted to make Taft High School a better place. I knew that I could bring something to the table, and I think looking back now, I did. Uh, the fact that my wife was pregnant with her first child also added a sentimental touch to that thought, because I had already planned out my kid was going to Taft. <laughs> and of course, of course he was going to Taft, right? Where else is he going to go? That's where your dad went, right? The only real question was back then is how do you get on the council? How could this kid potentially win a, a seat here on the local school council. Well, through the grace of God, it happened and campaigning helped too. You know, of course, that didn't come easy. My election uh, win was challenged by a member of that administration, someone who just happened to be also a teacher at the school when I was a student and I was on this council as a student rep. So I spent my first term uh, watching how things operated here. I began to ask questions and inquire about some issues that I thought were quite odd and uh, defied logic sometimes. The common response back then was, <laughs> and still today is, that's CPS, that's how they operate. I couldn't believe that was the response. I was receiving more and more, uh, I, I kept hearing that that was, that's just the way it works, that's the system. And then I started to get aggravated. And then with that aggravation building up, uh, my, my questions were beginning to sound a bit more confrontational rather than helpful. I just couldn't accept the fact that that was the answer. In my first term, uh, our meetings were completed within an hour. Typically, they were done in 45 minutes. Today, those same meetings are typically at least 90 minutes, if not like tonight, maybe even two hours. In addition to those meetings, we have multiple committee meetings now, which is a great addition to this whole process. The principal at that time, if you don't know, was uh, Dr. Arthur Tavardian. At the end of my first term on the local school council, he decided to retire. And I am convinced my nagging and questions had nothing to do with his retirement. He left on his own. But as the council changed over the time with new representatives, I have been lucky to have met so many great people. I'd like to acknowledge some of those people. And I'd like to acknowledge someone first and foremost who I think was instrumental in helping with Taft's success. <clears throat> first and foremost, that individual is Dr. Arthur Tavardian. He had fought tooth and nail for this school and he succeeded. Dr. Tavardian, along with the majority of the teachers and a small committed group of parents, really helped build the foundation to be able to take the school to the next level. I know for a fact, if that foundation had not been created by him, those teachers and those parents, this school would, would not be 
where it is today. <sighs> to all my local uh, fellow local school council members, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to help make this great educational institution even better. I want you to know that I appreciate it as a community member and as a, as a, as a family man, as a parent. To all TAF's donors, from the alumni association, excuse me, the alumni association to personal individuals. Thank you. You continue to help move us forward. I think it's very important to acknowledge an individual, the late Pharaoh Vitali, class of 1971, who really did a lot to get of himself uh, and gave of himself uh, to this school. He had passed away, and uh, I, I just don't think he's been recognized enough. Pharaoh, it's people like Pharaoh Vitali that uh, should never be forgotten at this school. To the teachers, staff, I cannot imagine what you have to go through on a daily basis to try and make this work for everyone. You are such an important part of this equation. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your commitment. And thank you for helping us make Taft exactly what it is supposed to be, an example to all other schools. To Mr. Grishaber and the administration, words cannot explain how enormously lucky we are to have selected you as our principal. You and your administration have truly taken our school to the next level, exactly as I expected you would do upon hiring. As you know, we have disagreed on numerous items, one of them being the overcrowding issue. <clears throat> I ask that this council and administration begin to deal with this issue that will present itself sooner rather than later, just as I predicted six years ago. Please don't wait. Please don't wait, because you will be late. Dealing with it sooner rather than later is key to the success of the school. Regardless, our goal is identical. The difference is the path. As long as we get to our goal, that is the only thing I'm concerned with. Thank you. I need to acknowledge just a few more people, folks, and please bear with me, and I'm sorry to have taken up so much time. Mr. Brian Nadig, <laughs> thank you for continuing to report on the Taft High School, on, on Taft High School. You have been coming out for over 30 years. I remember you as a child. I remember you as growing up. I, I, I just can't thank you enough. Thank you so very much for your commitment to our neighborhood school. Mr. Luis, Luis, Luis Garcia, thank you for always being kind enough to answer all our questions respectfully. You are a true professional, Mr. Garcia, and having you as our contact, especially during principal selection, made the entire process run much more smoothly. Always answered the calls, always answered the questions. He's, he's an enormous asset to, to CPS. Madam Chair, Ms. Fern, I just need to acknowledge your leadership. You've come a long way from that first meeting that you led, and I think that needs to be acknowledged. Your professionalism is top-notch, top ma'am. To my fellow community representative colleague, uh, Anita Bernacki, thank you for your kindness, your friendship, and direction. Uh, we didn't start off on the same page many years ago. I'm glad that we are examples of uh, what people can do if they come and work together to make ple these places better. To the new members of the Taft Local School Council, uh, welcome and thank you for taking the time to volunteer, to add to your <laughs> your life, right, to your, to your daily routine. Uh, Mrs. Julieta Rosales Pasco. Ma'am, I welcome you to this council. I wish you well in representing the community at Taft, and I can promise you the community will always have a position. And I hope that you are led with your, from what I feel is your good intention. Thank you very much. I wish all of you much luck and success in your next term. Please stay safe. And as we say in my parish and in my church, God grant you and your family many years. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, Corin. Getting a round of applause. Appreciate that. Cheers. Sorry it took so long. I just had to get that all off my back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, and then we will finally go to the public participation, which I only have one person. Where did my note go? Sorry. Here it is. Uh, Annalise Hankins, let me find you. There you are. Hey, go ahead. Hi, yeah, thank you guys all for your time and your hard work. Um, I just had one comment um, regarding the uh, renovations uh, from a student perspective. I think that's something that also needs to be looked at are um, the bathrooms. And I think um, someone mentioned that early on in the meeting, but it wasn't included in the presentation. So I would just like to um, put that um, at on the, in front of um, your guys' minds as something that um, is kind of gross going in, <laughs> honestly, as a student. Um, so um, I would just like to mention that. Thank you. Thank you, Annalise. Uh, definitely that is a subject that has come up many times over many different meetings, facilities, budget, general. First time we spoke to the Student Voice Committee. So, um, but yes, we will definitely make sure that that rises up to the top of the list. I think you'd be surprised how they look right now after nobody in there for <laughs> seven months. They look, they look spotless. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make two pretty quick predictions here before we go. We will be a level one school before level one plus school before this is all over. And uh, Mr. Gorn will probably be a parent rep one day. I'm predicting that right now. So there we go. <laughs> there you go. All right, I think we are adjourned. Thanks everybody for sticking in there till the very end and uh, good luck and goodbye to some, some of our committee members and welcome to some of our other ones. Uh, we will not have a meeting in January, but we may very potentially have a budget meeting. So watch your emails. I wish you all happy uh, holidays and uh, Goran's making a motion to adjourn. Do I get a second? <laughs> I think everybody's Gorn. seconding that one. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Good night. We're going to miss you, Gorn. <laughs>